Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Daniel Reyes. Um, I currently work as a consultant at Open Source Integrators. Uh, I'm actually leading the European office for open source integrators. That's a US based company. Just won the prize for best North America partner. <clears throat> And I'm also uh, involved in the Odoo community since its beginning, quite some years ago, and I'm currently a board member at the OCA. So today I'd like to um, talk to, with you about the PIP, uh, about how to how PIP tools, uh, what are kind of compatibility we have with PIP and Odoo. Um, so this is my agenda for today. Let me move to the next slide. Uh, first, uh, what kind of problems are we solving? Why is this a question? And then I'll do some, this is a high level or an entry level talk. If you are expecting to discuss all the PIP installation and dependency intricacies. This is not the right talk. This is really an introduction. Uh, I realize a lot of people are not aware of some of the, of the concepts I'll be presenting. That's why I came up with the idea of uh, presenting this to you. So I'll go starting at the beginning, explaining what is PIP and what are virtual environments. This is something closely related to PIP and there are two very useful tools in the Python ecosystem. And then um, uh, the um, short story is that we have been through time adding support to PIP and virtual environments to the, for the Odoo ecosystem. And I'll give you a short story behind how this evolved. There were several iterations led by different people in different points in time. And finally, I'll show you how you can run Odoo using PIP in a virtual environment and what benefits you may take from it. And I'll also walk you through what are the challenges of, on distributing the Odoo modules as uh, PIP installable packages and um, what's being done right now and what's supported. And of course, uh, I hope you have time for a Q&A so that you can make some questions. So let's get started. So what problem are we solving? <clears throat> so Python uh, comes with a package installer that's called PIP. So what does PIP, you run, um, PIP allows you to automatically install a package and discover and install it all its dependencies. So you probably in Ubuntu systems or Debian, you have APT, so you can APT install a package name and it will get all the dependencies it needed and the dependencies of the dependencies. So you have a dependency resolver and you get everything installed in your system and the package you ask to install is there then uh, ready for, to be used. So the equivalent of this in the Python world is pip. So pip is the tool that you ask to install a package and you can have it locally or it can search it in, in an online index, which is PyPy, and it will automatically download that package, find the dependencies, download the dependencies, download and install the dependencies of the dependencies, and you'll get in your system everything you need to run that package. So wouldn't it be great if we could do the same thing with Odoo? Uh, right now, a lot of the time you have, this has to be done manually because you need to find in the, the, in the, all the individual and download individually all the modules or all the repos that are dependencies of the module you want to install. So you need to find what are those and download them and make them available in your add-ons path. So there's quite some manual work to do the equivalent of that to um, uh, Odoo modules. So wouldn't it be great if we had a dependency resolver for Odoo modules? And the next question is, okay, Odoo is Python, right? Why don't we just use what exists there? If Python has a dependency resolver and installer that's pip, why can't we use that for Odoo modules too? So that's where we'll end at the end of this talk. So right now, today, uh, and 
we can install pip install modules. We can pip install Odoo, and it's possible to pip install modules. Now, if this is the best approach for your customer deployments, uh, I'm not sure. So there's different answers for different people. My point here is for you to know that these tools exist and how they work, okay? And you can make your assessment and decide what parts of this we use or if you use anything at all or not. So this is the problem we are solving. So the, the, the dream is I want to install the uh, HR employee first name OCA module and it just, or I want to install MIS builder and I just pip install MIS builder and I get everything I need in my system, all the dependencies needed, okay? That's the vision. <clears throat> so, and here is an example. So, uh, there's the OCA REST framework, and I want to install the base REST module. So, this um, uh, this is a module that enables uh, allows you to create REST APIs in Odoo. So, this is a framework to create your REST APIs, and this module has some Python dependencies. It depends on Cerberus, PyQuery string, parse accept language. So these are Python dependencies. You need to pip install this before base rest can run. But it also has some um, Odoo dependencies, Odoo module dependencies. It depends on the component uh, module and the component module is hosted in the different repo. <clears throat> it's actually, rep <clears throat> sorry. It's actually uh, hosted in the OCA connector uh, repo. And then this module has its own Python dependencies and it has its own Odoo dependencies and there and so on and on and on. Okay, so I want to pip, pip install base rest and it will resolve all Python dependencies and all Odoo dependencies. So that's what we want to achieve. So what is pip? Again, uh, pip is a, a pip is an acronym for pip installs packages. That's what I found in Wikipedia at least. And uh, it installs Python package in the current Python environment. So this is an important concept. These packages are, these packages are installed in the in Python environment. I believe right now for Ubuntu systems, this is your, is your user space. Uh, I think in pre previous versions, it used to be the system. You had to run it with sudo, uh, but this is important. By default, Python packages are installed in a server-wide context. And if there are upgrades to the server, this can break things because you might have some updates to libraries that are incompatible with your deployment. So that's where the next tool comes in, virtual environments. Now, it's important to know that PIP is very um, uh, flexible. It can install from local available packages. It can download them from PyPy, which is the online Python index, or it can even install directly from source code. So you can provide a, a, a Git uh, address, um, an URL to, to uh PIP and it's able to install packages from there as long as they have the proper format. The source code includes the setup information for that to work. Also, PIP has some nice features such as a requirements TXT file. So you can conveniently uh, store all your dependencies in a file. This is good for deployments. And, and just you use that as an input for PIP. So instead of manually sit, sit uh, saying all the dependency packages you want, you just use pip install minus r um, and the requirements txt file and it will install everything that's there. And you can even pin down the version so you can freeze your current environment and store what is the, the uh, exact versions that are being installed to have reproducible environments. So this is very powerful and there's a whole ecosystem around PIP. And it's really, if in the Python world, this is a reference. So we should, you, should, you should stick to it. Vir virtual environments allow you 
to have a controlled environment for your deployment where you are sure of what version packages are there. So you don't depend on the system administrator on what he's upgrading or not upgrading. If there's a system-wide upgrade on something, it won't affect your virtual environment. So it's a safe house for you uh, if you if you're doing deployments. Um, you probably should be using virtual environments to isolate the Odoo dependencies, uh, uh, Python related dependencies. For the development cycle uh, machines, it's also useful because you can have several different Python versions in different virtual environments. You can create one with Python 2.7 and a different one with Python 3.5 and another with 3.8. So you can have several environments that will run with for some, well for several different Odoo versions and you can activate, deactivate them at will. So this is also convenient for development scenarios. So what's the story behind Odoo packaging? The earliest, the beginning of this is not only that problem I stated at the beginning. The thing is that Odoo was not a good Python citizen. So any Python uh, framework, you expect them to play well with pip. So we expect that you could pip install Django and you expect it to work. And it didn't work with Odoo. It was not a concern. Um, it's, it's, still, it's still not at the top of the Odoo priorities, but they, they, accepted to, uh, they accepted work allowing for this. So that was something that um, if this is a, a Python-based framework, why is not friendly to the Python ecosystem tools? It doesn't make sense. So this had to be solved. And of course, there's also the practical benefits I, I, I mentioned before. It, it was not an easy task. So there was a first iteration, goes back to 2013. This is a former uh, Odoo R&D engineer, Vo Min Thu. So he created a packaging, for, uh, packaging tool for uh, uh, Odoo modules. Basically, it would take in uh, add-ons module directory, and we, you, it would package it, add the necessary files that it could be served as a Python package. This is a Haskell project, so I believe this was an experimental project, but this was like the first stone. I saw this work, and this was also a niche I had. It was a problem that I felt that needed attention. So I did some work around it. And at some point, I played with a tool that would do this. I called it pip for odoo um, And that would address both parts of, this, the, of the system, because you can't really Odoo discover, or module discovery depends on your, on your add-ons path, right? you need to go to the Odoo specific configurations to make them available. So I tried to build a tool that would do that automatically for you in Odoo, like a wrapper around Odoo and PIP. And I also did some work on, but using Python, because I didn't want work with, with Haskell, on the packaging side. So you have the packaging side and then you have the installation side. So I did some experimental work at this and I did a presentation in, uh, um, in 2014 in the open days, Odoo open days. I have the link to the presentation here. So this is obsolete because later on came Stefan from Axon and I think he was challenged internally by his team and he started doing the right way. So he started making some pull requests for core Odoo so that this support was built in. And he also um, uh, created, actually set up tools. These, the setup tools, uh, tools at that time were not enough for what we needed in the Odoo ecosystem. So he created some specific tools for that. This has improved over time. And I think that today, all of this is out of the box from Odoo and from Python's setup tools and pip tools. And you can do everything you need uh, without additional tooling. So right now with this years long effort of adding these small improvements on the several uh, different tools, Odoo and Python, 
we are at the state that this works basically out of the box. So it's um, um, uh, a great thank you for uh, Stefan. This is a presentation. He introduced his work in 2016. He did this presentation. Uh, I have a link below. Um, <coughs> notice here we talk about Odoo 8 and 9. And right now, this is um, something that, that works. So today, it works out of the box. Not only it works out of the box, but we also at the OCA uh, repos, we have automated the pub publishing these apps. The packaging and publishing is automated and all the uh, OCA modules are available on PyPy as Python packages so that you can pip install them. So here's an example. We do use a structured name. So this is the target Od Odoo version minus add-on key, and then the module name replacing underscores with minus signs. So if you pip install Odoo 14 add-on HR employee first name, you'll get it installed in your system and your Odoo will know about it without having to touch the add-ons path. <clears throat> so how does this work? So let's give you here a short demo. <clears throat> so here is my um, my terminal. And the first thing I do is to create a virtual environment. So I'm going to create a Python 3 virtual environment. Right now, the recommended way for doing this is using module VM. It's included in Python, Python minus M. VM and I have give a name to my environment. So this will create a directory containing a Python virtual environment. So if actually this- Just add, if you're using a Debian based uh, distribution, you need to install Python 3 dash virtual env to be able to have this module. Correct. Yes. Thank you, Alex. <clears throat> So this created a directory called myenv. Okay. And now I want to enable my environment. Actually, I have an environment enabled from, I was playing around. Let me deactivate it. I had this myenv1 activated. Now I want to enable my virtual environment. So pip will install on whatever is the active environment. Right now, the active environment is my user space. Now I want to enable. So I need to source a particular file inside that virtual environment. So this is a directory of my env and it's been activated. Of course, source needs to be typed correctly. I guess I think you know that. And now I'm on virtual environment. And this contains its own Python um, Python um, interpreter. So if I run this command, I can see that right now I'm using the particular Python version installed inside this virtual environment. Being here, I can now start installing stuff. And the next thing I can do going back to the presentation, I can install Odoo. So this is the pip install Odoo. And the how I usually do this, I actually I do this every day. I use this every day and I my development environments use pip installed Odoo. So you can pip install and now you just give the path to the uh, Odoo source code. So you clone your, your source code. In my case, I have the Odoo source code at my work 14 slash Odoo. So here I have my Odoo source code. This is a Git clone from Odoo source code, no modification, okay? And I can pip install. So this is Odoo. Okay, this is a relative path, okay? It's important if you've pip install Odoo right like this, uh, this looks like a package name and pip will try to get it from PyPy. And this is not published under PyPy. And even if it were, you're not sure what version of Odoo comes down with this. So I clone the code and I'm installing 
this directory. It's where I have my, my Odoo. And what this will do, it will install all the dependencies declared there and will install Odoo in my virtual environment. So this may take a minute because it needs to um, install all the dependencies from Odoo. Don't you need dash E here? I want to use dash E, uh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Alex. So, so dash E means that this, this is installed directly from the source code and the executable or whatever commands I have here are linked to the actual source code. So it, it just creates links to that source code. Like if I modify the source code in that Odoo directory, running Odoo will consider that. So this is like a, called a development installation or a live installation. The minus E is important here. While this installs, it's right now it's collecting all the dependencies and installing them. It's also possible to install directly from GitHub see here on my presentation below, you can provide instead of a local directory, you can provide an URL um, and install directly from Odoo and specify the branch or even the SHA or even the commit uh, number. Uh, this is needed to say that this will be installed as Odoo. Um, so you can install directly from the source code and this will download the source code, make it available. It will make a clone in your virtual environment and then pip install it. Uh, I don't, the only reason I don't recommend this is because this does a full clone and that's a big download. So I prefer to manually do a shallow clone with depth one and then do a pip install to that directory rather than doing this. And also I have more control over where the code is, is, uh, is stored. So you can see that Python here, uh, I'm, I mean, um, the pip here uh, is very flexible on uh, installing directly from source code too. And if you have the minus E, you can, it's running directly from the file, from the checkout of this repository. So it will immediately um, use code changes that you are doing to the source code because it's, it's using that source code. It's not a copy installed somewhere in a, a site packages directory. <clears throat> okay, so this may take a minute. Uh, while this is installing, uh, let's go to the next item here in my presentation. So we have some time left. Um, now, this is for Odoo itself and you can install Odoo here. The benefit you'll have, let me just give you an example with the other uh, environment I have. So my env1. I thought I had my env1. So, okay, so my one being activate. And I think here I had pip installed Odoo. So pip list. I believe I installed this in this other environment. Yes, it's installed and it's version 14 and it's um, this is Odoo. When you pip install Odoo, what's running here right now, I have it installed in another environment here, you have the Odoo command. So instead of directly calling, uh, having a, a full path to Odoo slash Odoo bin, instead of having to do this, and this will depend on where you are, if it's a relative path or you need to always provide. So this is not convenient. I find it much more convenient to use the available Odoo command installed. So this installs your command that's much more convenient for you to use in the development environment. 
So I can just use Odoo wherever I am, and this will run the currently pip installed version of Odoo. I find this very convenient. Um, and in the other environment, so okay, so this finished successfully installed all the dependencies in Odoo and on my this version, I can now run Odoo minus minus version and I could start even start Odoo. We are running out of time. I need to speed up and I can even run Five something minutes. like this. So I just started and stopped a server. See, I'm running Odoo 14. Um, Okay, there's something you don't see here. I, I'll, I'll explain you in a moment. Let's go back. So this is pip install Odoo and this is useful by itself. So I'm not saying anything about modules. Uh, you can still use the usual way. You can clone your repos. You can uh, edit your add-ons path, use a configura Odoo configuration file for that and work as usual. So you can do that. That's my usual workflow. But today we start to get other options. So you could install add-ons directly from pip2 instead of using git clones and manually managing the add-ons path. So uh, there's the packaging of add-on directories. This is automatic through the pre-commit hooks automatically take care of this. And I believe there's an OCA bot that does the upload part, uh, the actual package construction and uploading to PyPy on the server side. I'm not into all the details of this. We'd need to talk with Stefan. He was the one who prepared all of this, but this is made, this is automatic in the Odoo ecosystem. So you can expect the modules that are merged in Odoo to show up in the, in uh, to be pa automate, automatically packaged and show up in the PyPy index. Now more relevant, so this is, done for you. More relevant is how do you install them? So I showed you before that they are published under a Odoo version number minus add-on prefix. So, and you can do this on your system. So I can pip install Odoo 14 minus add-on minus, in case this is HR, it's something that's already ported to version 14, employee, first name. Notice that I have the virtual environment installed. So, and it's collecting all the other Odoo module dependencies, specific Python dependencies and installing everything needed. There's not a lot of dependencies here, but it's installed. Now I can, if I have a uh, PSQL running, if I have Postgres running, I do. I can Odoo minus D like demo, for example, a database and minus install HR employee. It's in my system now, I can, I can install it. Employee first name. Now notice here on the add-ons path, see this here? The my env lib python 3.8 site package Odoo add-ons. This is in the add-ons path. So pip takes care of putting this module code here and takes and Odoo knows that it should look into it to find the modules. So um, okay, actually. This will take a bit because it's creating a, a, a new database. I, I thought I had this one created for you. Let me check again. So let's, um, I don't know if that they have one. 14 HR maybe. 12 HR, that's exactly one. You, you, you read my mind, Alex, 14, you read 14. my mind. 14, not 12. 14 HR, you read my mind. Thank you. You're welcome. This will be much shorter because I have the dependencies installed. <laughs> so see, loading module, it's there and installing the views. 
So um, it was found and it's available. And what I didn't do, I didn't have to edit my add-ons path. That was handled automatically for me. Okay. And if I use the minus E, the uh, source code will actually be downloaded in a subdirectory of my virtual environment. I can locate it and work directly with it. It's a, 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 a GitHub repo. Uh, not in this case, but I can do this from the GitHub repo too. Okay, so this is, yes, this is my, um, what I wanted to show you. So you can pip install Odoo. Furthermore, you can pip install Odoo modules and Odoo will know about them if you follow these steps. Um, it should just, just work like you would expect, want it to be with pip. And you can then install the module. So the modules are downloaded and made available. You still have to manually install them, of, of course, for them to be, it, it doesn't do the installation part of Odoo. It makes them available in your system to be installed. And that's it. That's what I had for my presentation. And I'm open for questions. Thanks a lot, Daniel. I don't have any questions so far. Um, Jeff Wang asks, which directory is the module being downloaded? Uh, is it site packages? Uh, with the module installation, which directories are being downloaded? It's actually a package. So that HR, uh, in this case, the HR first name, uh, employee first name module, it's packaged. It's like a, if it was a zip file that's uploaded to PyPy and it downloads that file and makes that code available of that module alone. So it doesn't get the full repo if that's what you're asking. It just gets the package version for that module makes it available in add-ons. We actually, we can inspect it here. So I can look at the add-ons path. So it's my inf. Let's look at it. So my environment, it's um, my environment lib Python three site packages, Odoo, Odoo slash add ons. So actually, there's two modules there, there's a dependency. So these are just um, like extracted from the package that was downloaded from PyPy. Okay. Uh, next question uh, by uh, Mike Derstappen. Uh, why are we not using Python versioning instead of creating packages for every Odoo version? Python versioning? Well, I think is that mainly because Odoo modules are not compatible against uh, Odoo versions. So uh, if you're extending the view of a partner or the, the view of an employee in your uh, add-on, chances are the extensions won't work uh, in the same way on Odoo 12, 13, and 14. So you need to migrate the module uh, to, to the next version. Um, Oh, yes, yes, they're incompatible. They're, that's why we package, I understand. So there's a different package for Odoo 12, another, a different one for Odoo 13, a different one for Odoo 14, because they're incompatible. Mm -hmm. And it that actually is done to make it easier for you. Otherwise, we like, if there's a, a Python package that's incompatible with Python 3 and only supports Python 2, you, in your requirements, you need to make sure that you only get the latest version that's compatible with Python 2. So you need to add some additional instructions on what kind of package or version you accept, and that makes your work harder. So the simple thing, it's with just package them, package them independently and version them independently depending on Odoo major version. Okay, um, I I have still a, a couple of questions, but it's uh, twenty five. Well, it's almost time for the next talk, yep. so uh, I don't think we'll be able to to tackle these. The question, I, by Eve, yeah. Uh, 
if you want to mention me in the tracks uh, Discord app, I can. I'm I'm happy to answer questions there. Okay, uh, one small note: there's a, a typo in the module name in your last last slide. You install one module, uh, which is not the one you just downloaded, but. It's actually, I have two. No, it, it, you, you typed it correctly, but uh, the last line you want uh, Odoo dash I HR employee first name. Yes, correct. I'll fix this before uploading. We're missing underscore first name here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Danielle. Thank you.